today's topic of discussion is about lathe drilling machine and milling machine so lathe machine a lathe is a machine tool which holds the workpiece between two rigid and strong supports called senders or they can be held in between chucks so chuck and sender are basically work holding devices the cutting tool is rigidly held and supported in a tool post which is fed against the revolving work the normal cutting operations are performed with the cutting tool fed either parallel or at right angles to the axis of the work uh, so this figure is actually the figure of a lathe machine here uh, the work is actually held between uh, two senders this is one sender which is known as the live sender and this is the second center which is known as dead center so the workpiece will be held between these two centers and uh, the workpiece will be normally rotating and uh, you will feed a cutting tool now the cutting tool is actually held on the tool post here you can see the tool post the tool post is held on a held on a carriage now this entire uh, setup is known as carriage so the tool post will rest on a compound slide and then on a cross slide which are used to provide different motions and finally you will feed the tool either parallel or at right angles to the axis of the workpiece this is the axis of the workpiece you can either feed the tool along the axis of the workpiece so that you can reduce the uh, diameter of the workpiece or you can feed uh, it at right angles to the axis of the workpiece that is uh, towards the plane of uh, the screen that you are seeing so that uh, you can uh, again uh, cut the material uh, now again if you see uh, here you can see the different parts you have a headstock over here headstock here you have a tail stock so the dead center is actually attached to the tail stock and the tail stock can move uh, in the direction parallel to the axis of the workpiece uh, so that you can uh, hold different uh, length of workpiece in between these two centers um, now the uh, live center live center is actually fixed it you cannot move the live center uh, but the live center rotates so it gets that power from the headstock so headstock has some gear arrangement which gives power to the live center the live center along the workpiece rotates whereas the dead center uh, does not rotate that is why it is called as dead center and it is held in the tail stock now this entire unit is actually resting on the base which is also called as bed b e d bed or base uh, it is usually made of cast iron uh, now here you can see the uh, bed then uh, you can see a lead screw over here lead screw which actually gives a motion to the tool post or carriage that is you can uh, move this uh, entire carriage automatically by uh, attaching it to the uh, lead screw here now uh, moving on to the different parts of the lathe the first one is bed bed is usually made of cast iron uh, headstock carriage and tailstock are bolted to the bed uh, now the bed has two smooth surfaces called guideways here you can see the guideways uh, the carriage and tailstock slides through this guideways next is headstock assembly uh, it is fixed at the left end of the lathe drive mechanism is located inside the headstock assembly uh, drive mechanism is a gearbox which gives required speed and direction of rotation headstock supports a hollow shaft called spindle a gearbox rotates the spindle chuck is attached to the spindle which holds the workpiece so we have already seen this in the main figure uh, next is tailstock assembly uh, this is the tailstock we have seen this tailstock earlier uh, in the main figure it is located at the right end of the lathe can be moved along guideways supports right end of the workpiece also used to support drill tools during drilling operation that is for drilling operation uh, like this uh, drill tool will be attached and you can drill a hole in the workpiece this is the workpiece which is held on a chuck here you can see chuck because in the first slide we have uh, actually mentioned that you can uh, attach the workpiece either in senders here you have seen senders along with that you can also use a chuck a chuck is shown here here a chuck is used to hold the workpiece this is the workpiece which is holding between the chuck and the drill bit is used to drill a hole on the workpiece next is lathe carriage it is located between headstock and tailstock it consists of parts which hold the tool and control the movement of tool cross slide moves the tool perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the workpiece uh, similarly a compound slide is also there which allows to cut the uh, workpiece at angles next is the feed mechanism you can see the feed see uh, the feed mechanism here it is happening 
So feed shaft is used for automated movement of carriage along guideways. Feed mechanism is the movement of tool with respect to workpiece. A tool can uh, be given three types of feed, longitudinal feed, cross feed and angular feed. Longitudinal feed means the tool moves parallel to axle rotation of the workpiece. Cross feed, here tool moves perpendicular to the axle rotation of the workpiece. And angular feed, here the tool moves at an angle with respect to the workpiece. Next is working a lathe. The function of a lathe is to remove metal from a piece of work to give it a desired shape and size. In a lathe machine, the workpiece is rotated against the tool. The tool is used to remove material from the workpiece. The direction of motion of the tool is called feed. So the direction of motion of tool in this case is known as feed. Uses of lathe. A lathe machine has a variety of applications in industrial field. Commonly uh, known uses of lathe machine are metal working, wood turning and glass working. A metal lathe or a metal working lathe is a large class of lathe designed for precisely misting relatively hard materials. It is used to make uh, metal tools of any size uh, used in factories and industries. Wood turning is the craft of using wood lathe with handheld tools to cut a shape that is symmetrical around the axis of rotation. Like the potter's wheel, the wood lathe is a simple mechanism uh, which can generate a variety of forms. A skilled turner can produce a wide variety of objects with five or six simple tools. Then glass working lathe uh, are found in almost every scientific glass blowing shop. Uh, they provide a much wider range of glass manipulation, size and accuracy than can normally be achieved by hand. Hence, they are used to create glass tools of various shape. Lathe machines also have many uses in industrial area like uh, sand cutting, knurling, drilling and uh, deforming of tools that are employed in creating jobs which have symmetry about the axis of protection. Different operations performed on lathe. One is facing. So here facing, uh, this is the tool and this is the work. The work is rotating in this direction and you are uh, feeding uh, the tool so that you can create a perpendicular face here. So this operation is known as facing. Next is taper turning. Taper turning is the process of reducing the cross section of the workpiece but in a uh, tapered manner. So here you can see a tapered surface is created here. That is known as taper turning. Next is contour turning. Contour turning is the process of creating a contour. We can see a contour shape here on the uh, workpiece. So the contour turning use a tool to produce a contour shape. Next is form turning. Form turning is done with the help of a form forming tool. So this is actually black color is the forming tool. The tool has a particular shape and that shape will be produced on the workpiece. Next is chamfering. Chamfering is the process of uh, uh, reducing uh, that is if the surface has a sharp edge suppose uh, here we have a sharp edge so chamfering is the process of reducing the sh uh, sharpness of the edge that process known as chamfering cutting off uh, it is actually the removal of uh, material after a particular depth that is known as cutting off threading is the process of creating threads boring boring is the process of uh, increasing the size of an already existing hole up to a particular length so here actually uh, a hole of this diameter was existing already and we have used a boring tool to increase the size of the hole up to a particular length. Up to this length, the hole size has been increased. Drilling is the process of creating a hole. Knurling. Knurling is the process of creating diamond shaped pattern on the work surface by using a knurling tool. It is usually used for gripping. Uh, this type of pattern is uh, produced on the workpiece usually for gripping. Next is drilling machine. It is the simplest machine tool uh, in the production shop and is used for drilling holes on workpiece. It forces a rotating tool against the workpiece. For more accuracy, reaming or boring is done after drilling. So in drilling, actually you are forcing a rotating tool into the workpiece. In the case of lathe, the workpiece was rotating and you are forcing a stationary tool into the workpiece. But in the case of drilling machine, here the workpiece is stationary. The workpiece is actually held on this work table and you have a drill chuck over here in which a drill bit is attached which will be rotating and to be feed into the workpiece. Now the different parts of a drilling machine are base. The base is a heavy casting that supports the uh, total machine. It provides rigid mounting for the column and stability of, for the machine. Column. Column is a cylindrical uh, vertical structure which rests on the base. It supports the power head, spindle head and the table of the machine. Then table, table is used for supporting the workpiece or workpiece holding device. It is capable of moving up and down and the column can also uh, swing around the uh, around the column. Then spindle and spindle head assembly. Spindle is the rotating part onto which the chuck is attached. The chuck holds the drill uh, so that when the spindle rotates, the tool also rotates. The spindle uh, can also move up and down in a sleeve slide. 
The spindle receives power from the electric motor with the help of a belt drive. The spindle speed can be changed with the help of a stepped pulley. So basically, in this figure, we can see here a belt drive and driving motor is provided. So the drive is given here. Now uh, at this portion, we have, we have different gear arrangements to change the speed. And then the drive is given uh, to the chuck and the spindle. The workpiece will be held in the uh, spindle and the workpiece will also rotate. You can uh, move this feed handle to uh, bring the chuck and the tool downwards. The work will be held on this work table. You can also move up and down this work table, but usually this will be fixed at a particular position and then you will move the uh, feed handle to move the uh, drill bit and uh, create hole on the workpiece. Now this entire uh, parts are actually supported on the base. Next is various drilling operations which are performed. First one is drilling. It is the operation of producing, here you can see drilling, it is the operation of producing cylindrical holes of required diameter and depth. It is done by removing metal by rotating edge of a cutting tool called a drill. So the cutting tool, this tool is actually called drill, it is fed into the workpiece. It is a rotating cutting tool fed into the workpiece to remove metal up to a particular depth so as to create a hole that is drilling. Next operation is reaming. This is the figure of reaming. So in reaming, it is the operation of sizing and finishing the inside surface of a drilled hole. So it is the operation of sizing and finishing the inside surface of a drilled hole. The tool used for reaming is a multi tool tool. This is the reaming tool and it is called a reamer. Uh, next is boring operation. This is the figure of boring operation. Here you can see boring. So boring is the operation of enlarging a drilled hole for producing more accurate hole. It uses adjustable single point cutting tool. This is the drilling operation performed. Here the hole size is increased up to a particular depth. So you can see here the finished figure. Actually, this was the original hole size. Now you have increased in the size to this much up to a particular depth. That is uh, boring. Next is counter boring. You can see counter boring figure here. Counter boring is operation of enlarging the hole for a specific length. Here again, you are enlarging the hole up to a particular depth for seating. Uh, uh, so here the uh, enlarging hole for a specific length that can be done using a counter boring tool or a boring bar. So here you use a counter boring uh, tool or a boring bar. So in the case of uh, boring, here uh, actually at some cases the depth might increase uh, to full length but basically uh, this is used for shaping and finishing of a already existing hole whereas counter boring is specifically used for increasing the depth uh, up to a uh, predetermined length uh, basically this is done for seating now next is counter uh, counter boring we have already discussed uh, next is uh, tapping sorry counter sinking Counter sinking is the process of making a cone shaped enlargement at the beginning of the hole. This provides seat for the head of a countersunk head uh, screw or bolt. So, this is actually the figure of counter uh, sinking. Here, uh, you are increasing the depth of the already existing hole up to a particular depth but in a specific tapered manner so that uh, the screw bolt can seat here perfectly. Next is tapping. This is the figure of tapping. Tapping is the process of uh, creating internal thread in a drilled hole. So, you already have a drilled hole and then you are creating internal thread in the hole that is known as tapping process. So, next is milling machine. Milling is the process of removing metal by feeding a workpiece against a rotating multi point cutter. So, here you are using a multi point cutter and it is rotating. As the cutter rotates, each cutting edge removes small amount of material from the advancing workpiece for each rotation of cutter. The rate of metal removal is rapid as cutter rotates at high speed and has many cutting edges. Now, the direction of cutter rotation, according to the direction of cutter rotation, milling is classified into conventional or up milling and climb milling or down milling. Conventional milling, the workpiece is workpiece, which is mounted on a table, is fed in opposite to the direction of rotating cutter. So, this is the uh, conventional or here you can see the conventional or up milling process. The work is fed in a direction opposite to the rotation of cutter. Cutter is rotating in this di direction. Work is fed in the opposite direction. Climbing, uh, climb milling or down milling is the in which work is, is mounted on a table and is fed in the same uh, direction of rotating cutter. So this is the direction of rotating cutter and you are feeding the work piece in the same direction. That is known as down milling or climb milling. Now the parts of milling machine. Here uh, the figure shows the uh, milling machine. Uh, it has a base, the foundation a member of all uh, foundation member for all parts of the milling machine. It gives the machine required rigidity and strength. Next is column. It is a main supporting frame mounted vertically on the base. Front face of column has vertical guideways. Next is knee. A rigid casting that slides up and down on vertical guideways of column base. 
It has horizontal guide views on top surface. It supports saddle and table and is partially supported by elevating screw which adjusts the height of knee. Uh, saddle, uh, it supports and carries the table and is adjustable on guide base on top of knee. In the table, it rests on guide base on saddle and can be moved longitudinally. It supports the workpiece. Elevating screw, uh, height of knee is adjusted by elevating screw also supports the knee. The spindle, the spindle obtains its power from motor and transmits it to an arbor. It has a tapered socket for inserting arbor. Overarm, overarm is mounted on the top of column. Overarm support uh, provided at free end of the overarm can be moved horizontally on guide base provided at the bottom surface of the overarm. Vertical movement of the knee, horizontal movement of the saddle and the movement of table perpendicular to motion saddle etc. It can be obtained manually or by uh, power from electric motor. Next is arbor. Arbor is the road on which cutter is mounted. It is tapered at one end to fit into the spindle. Other than such the arbor is mounted in a bearing provided in the overarm support. So basically this is the layout of a, a milling machine. So the milling cutter is actually mounted on the spindle or arbor. Then it is attached to an overarm. So the power is provided uh, by using motor to the spindle so that the spindle uh, uh, and the cutter actually rotates. The workpiece is held on the table which is held on a saddle which can have motion. Then you have a knee which is supported on an elevating screw so that you can raise or uh, down uh, the uh, work table. Then the entire then it has a column. The column has a vertical guideways through which the knee can be raised or uh, lowered. So the entire uh, parts are supported by the base. Next are operations performed on milling machine. One is plane milling. So this is the figure of plane milling. This is a process by which flat horizontal surface parallel to the axis of cutter can be produced. Cutter used is known as plane cutter. Next is face milling. This is face milling. It is a process by which flat surface perpendicular to the axis of cutter is produced. The cutter used is called face milling cutter. This cutter is known as face milling cutter. Next is end milling. This is the figure of end milling. The process by which a flat surface which is uh, vertical or horizontal is produced. Cutter used is called end milling cutter. Um, it has cutting edges on the periphery of the shank. End milling cutters are used to produce slots, grooves, keyways, etc. Next is T slot. This is the T slot operation. T slot is produced by using T slot cutter. This cutter is known as T slot cutter. First, a plain slot is cut on the workpiece using an end milling cutter, and then the T slot cutter is fed from one end of the workpiece. The neck portion of the cutter passes through the already milled plain slot. Next is angular milling. Uh, this is the figure of angular milling. It is the process by which angular surfaces are produced on the workpiece. Cutter being used is known as angle milling cutter. So uh, this is an angle milling cutter. So thank you and uh, wishing you all a happy learning.